Welcome back to another video with Liam and his BMW F34. In the previous video, we installed a in-gen cold air intake, um, some charge pipes, and an intercooler in the video before that as well. Today we're going to be installing a CTS blow-off valve, and we're also going to be turning up the boost. This one is a 50% atmospheric and 50% recirc blow-off valve. Installing a blow-off valve on the N20 is uh, not as easy as you might think it is because it actually has an electric blow-off valve. So because the blow-off valve on the car is electric, we're going to have to um, basically install a external boost control solenoid, run some vacuum lines, and we are gonna have to tap into the vacuum system. If you have an electronic wastegate like Liam does, then you'll have to install a boost tap. We're gonna pull this intake off. If you have a stock air box, whatever, we're gonna get that out of the way. You're gonna to wanna to remove your wastegate before you remove the bypass valve marked where the jam nut originally was for the wastegate just so you can put it back in the same spot. Liam's gonna hold the one side. I'm gonna break this side loose. Oh my God, that was tight. But you have to remove the pipe coming right off the turbocharger outlet in order to get to the bolts for the wastegate. The bolts for the wastegate are a T45, I believe. That's your bypass valve right there. That's what we're gonna be removing. There's one bolt there, it's a T30. There's another one over there. And there's gonna be one below this that is not gonna be easy to get to. Three days later. Okay, so we still have not got, we've gotten one of the bolts of the three bolts out. It's very difficult. It is physically impossible to get an extension on the top right bolt. You just cannot get past this portion of the block. Even my extension won't fit in between the block and the bypass valve. So I'm gonna be using this Allen key. This is a, a, a T30 Allen key or key wrench. That will allow me to get in there and get this loose. Okay, there we go, it's in. Oh, it's loose, there we go. 364 days later. We got it out, but we definitely had to get creative to say the least, eh, Leo? And we had to use his phone, his camera, so that we could get an idea of where the, the uh, where this needed to be in there. Kind of guide it in onto the bolt and then we were to crack it loose. 2,000 years later. And there is the evil little son. To get the top left hand. Right hand. Top right hand bolt out. We actually taped a T30 Torx bit to a clothes iron because it was the only thing we had that was actually thin enough that could get between the block and the bypass valve to actually thread that bolt out. And then we used a magnet to get it out. For the bottom bolt, on the very bottom, down here, we were able to use our quarter inch extension, but we used my camera down there so that we could see where the bolt was. We are now installing the blow-off valve. This has been nothing but an absolute nightmare. I've uh, never seen something so hard to install. So to install the top right bolt, I'm gonna get it in place with my little magnet here. Uh, blow-off valve is in. Wastegate's going on, charge pipe's going on, and then we're going to show you guys how to re-plumb the vacuum system. Uh, so specifically be if you have an electronic wastegate. If you have a uh, manual wastegate, you're just going to tap into some different vacuum lines. You're going to remove this cover, and basically there's a line that comes off of a servo to the brake booster. We're going to remove this line. It's just a squeeze clip on either side. I think this side just pulls out and that side squeezes and pulls off. So we're going to remove this line and then we're going to have to modify it and we'll show you guys how to do that. So now that we have this hose off, um, this side in the brake booster was kind of tricky to get off. We had to use a large flathead to pry under it here and pry it out. It's definitely stubborn. Or sorry, yeah, this side, really stubborn. This side, super easy. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up each side of these fittings and we're gonna slowly pop off these ends because we're gonna use these ends. We've got some hose here. This is what we're gonna be using to modify this. And we have a T. Unfortunately, the one we're using is brass because we couldn't find a plastic one. But basically, we're gonna be tapping into this line and this is where we're gonna steal our vacuum source from. When you're doing this, you wanna be really careful because uh, if this leaks, you could 
end up losing your brakes. So you wanna do this properly and make sure everything's secure. We're also gonna be securing this line with hose clamps to make sure nothing leaks. So yeah. Do a little cut it too. That's good, that's too much. Okay, so this is the contraption we've come up with. We secured all of our ends. This is also the orientation. We are doing everything else. So if you guys want to copy this, feel free to. If you're wondering, this is 3 8 coolant hose and it fits really nicely. We have two 3 8 barbs and then this is a 1 8 barb. So. Yeah, and then this is also a, uh, these are quarter inch. NPP as well. Yeah, quarter inch NPT fittings, and then we have a female quarter inch NPT T. So, yeah, we're gonna button this on. We're gonna run our uh, vacuum line from the boost control solenoid to this. I'm gonna give you a rundown of how we plumbed everything here. And uh, this was definitely an absolute nightmare. On CTS's website, they state that it takes an hour to two hours depending on your skill level there's no way that's possible uh, not possible it's finally working after i lost so many brain cells <sighs> routing wise on the this is the solenoid here we have our solenoid mounted upside down but on this this is the top of the solenoid we have that mounted to the top of the blow off valve so it's actually on the barb fitting right there, that line, so top of the blow-off valve. And then on the bottom of the blow-off valve, closest to the turbo, we have that running to the side of the solenoid with the connector. And then on the opposite side, parallel to the connector, this is where we tapped in for our vacuum source, which we then ran all the way up along the, I don't know what you want to call that. And then this is our uh, thingamajig we tapped into. And yeah, this is all gonna get covered up so you won't see it. If you wanna do a cleaner way and you wanna spend an extra 100 bucks, there is a company that makes an adapter you put over here and it has a fitting and I believe it creates some kind of vacuum effect. But uh, this was easy, simple, cheap, and it works. So yeah, now we're gonna button everything up and we're gonna take you guys for a spin and Liam is gonna crank up the boost. <laughs> what? Did you hit the trunk? Yeah, perfect. Oh my god. Just give it a few revs. Give it a few revs. Sounds good. Jesus Christ. It is so loud. This is so loud out here. I already know what revs you have to get out of here. Yep. <laughs> In today's video, how high can we jump Liam's BMW? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later, Dirty Mike. We'll see you next time on the tripod. Yeah, buddy.